Hi folks and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. What you see in the vise is a little pearly cormorant, so without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H260 barbless hook. This one's at size 10, it's on a heavy wire and it's in black nickel. The thread I'm going to use to start off with is the Simplify Classic White at 12 volt. First thing I'm going to do is get a little wax onto my thread and catch it in just in behind the eye. Now the cormorant's such a versatile pattern. Uh, this one in particular actually, it, it's really good. It can be taken as a small bait fish, can be taken as a buzzer, you can fish it slow, you can fish it fast, it's just got so much to offer us fly fishermen. So I've brought my thread up to where a barb would be on a hook and I'm just going to remove my rat's tail. Now the next thing I want to do is add in a rib. Now I'm going to be using some silver wire, as you can see here. It's at 0.1 millimetres, so very thin. And the reason for that, I wouldn't normally bother with a rib, but I'm going to be putting some pearl lurex on the back end of this fly and I need something to protect it. Excuse me. Oh, lost control of my thread there, so I've just brought some more on the bobbin just to catch that in. What I'm trying to do, and not making a great job of it, is keep this wire on the top of the shank. And uh, the reason for that is I want to keep the body nice and thin and I don't want the pearl lurex showing off the underneath of my wire rib. So I've caught that in, I'm fairly happy with its placement and I'm going to add some pearl lurex, this is from Vivas, it's the P01 in medium and I've got a little bit off here that I've been working with. It gives a, a very uh, effervescent shimmer to it which I really like. Now, the reason I started off with a white thread is if I'd started with the black, which I'll be switching to shortly, shortly, uh, it would show through this, despite the fact that it's, it's quite a thick um, lurex, it would still shine through. It would change the colour of the fly, and I don't want that. So I'm just building a little taper in. Where I've tied in the rib and the lurex, it's obviously just stepped up the thickness of the body ever so slightly. So I've just took a little bit of time to even that out a bit. So I'm going to bring my lurex over now. I want it in touching turns. But because I've used a white thread, if I miss a tiny little bit, I'll not have to worry about it it will not make that much difference to the finished pattern. You don't want a great deal of bulk, bulk, bulk on this, uh, this bit of the body. So bring that round, fairly happy with where it's sitting. I'm going to just get some turns to get it up to my thread and I'm going to capture that into place. Two or three turns in front and then you can safely come in and remove the lurex. Always pays to get a couple of turns in front of your material. Just locks it into place and stops the thread backing up. So next, I'm going to bring my wire over. Doesn't really matter which way it comes. The sole purpose of the wire is to protect the lurex against trout teeth. Now, the other way of doing this, if you didn't want to put a ribbon, is of course putting a thin layer of UV varnish over the top and that'll do exactly the same job. And I've done that many times in the past, but I just thought I'd show you this way. It does look quite nice with the rib. So I've brought that all the way up to meet my thread again. Again, I'm gonna get two or three turns over. Couple of turns in front. And then I can safely twist away my rib. Make sure you twist away, don't be tempted to pull it because that's when you'll have some problems. 
Okay, next I'm going to tie in my cheeks and what I'm using is some comp candy. They're goose biots and this, these ones have been dyed hot orange as you can see. I've already taken a couple off and I'm going to get them together with the outsides facing in. So you can see they're sort of just moving apart. Get them nice and even because you want your cheeks to be to be even. So I'm going to dress them up, catch the very tips of my fingers and it might just block the camera view out so please excuse my fingers and I'm going to bring them back and from the eye of the hook I'm probably coming back a full centimetre. Make sure they're kind of sitting in the same sort of trajectory if you know what I mean. Next I'm going to get add in the thorax. And what I've got here is some dyed peacock herald and this has been dyed black and I've taken one strand out. Now you can use two or three, it's up to yourself but I'm a wee bit tight. I just use the whole strand to get the bulk I want uh, and what I'm going to do is take off this bit at the base. Just take that away and then I can capture that in like so. Once you're happy you've got it in place, bring your thread to the front of the hook. Now, make sure you leave yourself plenty of space at the front here because we are going to bring the goose biots over and we've got to create a head, of course, as well as tie in the wing. So, first thing I'm going to do is get a good layer of the peacock herald down onto the thorax area. And once I've got this with good coverage, I can then come back, less worried now, and bulk up the thorax area with the rest of the, the herald. You can see how using two would probably be a lot quicker, but I'm not in a rush. So again, I'm coming round, I've caught that in, and I'm just going to make sure it goes nowhere. Now, herald at the very tip is very weak. And as you see, I've just pulled that away there. No problem at all. Okay, next thing to do then is grab both your goose biots, bring them round. Now, what I like to do is try and make them meet on top. Now, I'm just going to keep tension on my thread and turn my vise so I hope you can see how I've got this looking. Uh, so the 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 her the herald the goose biots are meeting on top. So once I've got that how I like it, I'm just going to get a few more wraps down. I'm going to bring the goose biots to the rear and get two or three wraps in front. Then with each one individually, I'm going to twist it away. And once I'm happy with that. I'm simply going to, excuse me, the whip finish tool. It's still a vein in my life. I've been at it for a while now. And sometimes it still just won't play the game for me. Like there. But I persevere because I'm told it's good practice. In fact, nowadays I hardly ever just do the old half, half hitch finish. I've got that used to using it. Okay, so I'm going to transfer threads now. And what I'm bringing in is some nano silk, and the reason I'm using nano silk is simply just to keep it nice and neat at the front. So a couple of turns should see me cast on. Then I can remove my thread. Okay, so wing. I'm going to be using some comp candy. This is the uh, blackjack marabou, and I've already got a little feather that I've been working with here. Lovely stuff. So I want to take approximately the width of my thumb. I'm going to whip that off. And I'm going to come quite far back up the marabou. I like the wing to be nice and slim on this one. 
then I'll remove my waste. I'm going to damp down the very ends so I can just tidy that up, bring up the wing and then pop it over. Once you've got that into place you're free to then build your head. Now obviously that's far too long especially if you're a comp angler so we're going to come in with the thumb and forefinger off our right hand just pinch in behind the bend and pull away your excess. Now I'm going to wet the thumb and forefinger in my left hand I want to slick everything back out the way now and then with my whip finish tool I can finish off and that went a lot better than the last time with a white thread so once you've removed that you can use super glue you can use head cement I'm going to use some Solaris bone dry uh, it's my preferred way of finishing my flies I think it gives a nice finish to the head and you've got this little brush which I do not know what I'd do without nowadays to apply the head and generally with this kind of fly I only give it one coat it's all that's required give it a zap with a torch and the job's a good one as I say it can be used as a, a, a small bait fish fry pattern or it can be fished as a buzzer as you see if I took the wing off it's more or less a buzzer already so it's a great wee pattern brilliant for fishing uh, as a team I like to fish it in the middle between a blob maybe a couple a couple of these in the middle and a booby on the point it's a great searching pattern Thanks very much for watching. If you're enjoying what I'm doing, please don't forget to give the video a like. And if you've not subscribed already, I would really appreciate your support. And I'll see you all next time.